Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So my name is Nicole. I am an esthetician. I love skincare, love K-beauty, and I also enjoy going to Korea, I guess. Recently, one of my videos that I made about going to Korea and quarantining there kind of had a little bit of traction on my channel. And a lot of people have been asking questions about the quarantine process in South Korea. So today, let's just get into all of the questions that you guys have asked me, I will answer them all and we will talk about the whole quarantine process and all of the things that I missed in my past video if you haven't already seen that. Okay, so these are in no particular order, but the first question that I have in my comment section is, were you able to request certain foods for dietary restrictions at the government quarantine facility, gluten-free vegetarian? This is a very good question. So when I went to Korea, I went from June 4th to August 6th. So I was there for about two months and I had to quarantine for two weeks in June. Now the quarantine process is a little bit different depending on if you're vaccinated and what country you're from. At least from my general knowledge now, if you are vaccinated and you're from the US, you don't have to quarantine anymore. If you are from a country where you still have to quarantine, you do sort of get a dietary restriction option. I believe they do have a vegetarian option and then they have a halal option. There are specific options and I think you can relay that to the people working there if you don't see the options that you need. I don't know about gluten-free, that's a very good question. I would say the only thing that I typically ate while I was there that had gluten in it was rice. I did not really encounter a lot of gluten product. It was a lot of meat and vegetables. You will have the option to check off what dietary restriction you have, but I believe that it's very limited. So the next and very popular question that I got was, do you have to make a reservation for the quarantine facility or is it decided for you? So yes, it is decided for you once you arrive at the airport. Basically, whatever facility, I guess, that they want to bring people to that day is what they bring you to. It's definitely very important to watch my first video as well because I go into depth about the whole airport process. But once you get on the bus, to go to your hotel, you still don't know what hotel you're actually going to. The only reason I actually knew before I got on the bus was because my boyfriend was at the airport and actually asked one of the COVID attendants. So I actually knew before I got on the bus, but typically you will not know until you arrive there. Literally, once you arrive, you walk in to, at least they brought us to almost like this downstairs ballroom area um, where it looks like they hold conventions, but they had tables set up where where we basically just fill out some information, give them our credit card. They give us a receipt with the full amount that we're paying for the entire stay. So we don't pay per day. We just pay all up front. And that was 1500 US dollars. Okay, someone also asked me a more in-depth question about um, if towels were able to be brought up. They saw that additional towels weren't brought up for another vlogger. They asked if I had to use the same towels for 14 days. And they were also asking if my final bill was $1,500 or was it more than that? At least for my hotel, and I really think that this goes for every hotel, but they would bring up extra towels, extra trash bags, because there were special trash bags we had to use. And I believe if you needed any shampoo or any toiletries, which I did not need because they gave us full size bottles, which typically those bottles would last me like a month to two months, like on a regular basis. So I didn't need any of those things, but um, yes, they do bring that stuff up for you. You don't have to sit around for 14 days using the same towel, especially if you're in there with family. Um, I don't see why they would not bring that stuff for you. You can look at the specific or range of pricing that you can encounter, but the most consistent range that I saw and what I experienced was $1,500 for the entire two-week hotel stay. So someone asked, what time do the shuttle buses after you get discharged from quarantine? 
uh, what time do they take you? I actually never replied to this person, but it looks like they're probably, oh, you know what? I could still reply to them. They're not done with their quarantine yet. I don't necessarily know the exact details of when the taxis or shuttle buses will take you somewhere. If I'm correct, I believe that the shuttle buses will take you to a subway station. And from there, I think you go to wherever you need to go, or they might bring you to a bus station. Honestly, I kind of forget, but I do believe they bring you to like a public transport location. They won't stop at like individual hotels or Airbnbs. They're gonna go to like one big base where everyone can kind of go their own separate ways. I think you can also get a taxi if you want to. And then there's also a way to um, have someone pick you up. So my boyfriend lives there. I had him pick me up. So when you are about to get discharged, two days before you're discharged, they give you a slip that you have to fill out and it gives you all in English, at least for me it was all in English. They gave you like the different options and the different rules for those different options. So there was like a taxi, there was a shuttle bus, there was a like personal um, member relationship person that's gonna pick you up. So you have to indicate which one you're going to do and then they give you specific rules for that. I do believe that if you have like a per like a family member or um, like a friend pick you up, you have to write down their phone number and they will call them and give them the directions as well as what to do. For me, they gave me the option of leaving at 12 a.m. the night my quarantine ended or at like 7 a.m. the day after. So I decided I'm gonna leave at 12 a.m. the night my quarantine ends because I was ready. So I left around 11 like 50 because they said that you could leave a little bit earlier, like 10 to five minutes. Went down the elevator. I felt so wrong doing all of this because I was like, oh my God, like am I allowed to get out of here? You like are trapped there for two weeks. You're not allowed out of your room. So you're like nervous that someone's gonna catch you even though you're not doing anything wrong, right? But basically I waited in a line, which went pretty fast. It was long, but it went fast. I think you gave them your hotel key and like you checked out and that, that was it. Basically, you go through the store to the parking lot and there's like a parking lot area and basically I just looked for my boyfriend, I found him. Yeah, then we went on our way. I think that there are different processes for different people. I have a feeling when it comes to doing the shuttle buses and the um, taxis that if I remember correctly, I think you actually had to leave the day after your quarantine ended. So you couldn't leave at 12 a.m. You had to leave at 7 a.m. the next day because I don't think anyone would be picking anyone up at 12 a.m. That's that with discharge. So I also just want to answer a broad, broad question. I've been getting a lot of questions about like, can I stay at an Airbnb? Like, how do I stay at an Airbnb? Very good question. You cannot stay at an Airbnb to quarantine unless you have family in Korea. They either have to be like permanent residents, citizens, have a visa, like they have to be living, living there. It, they can't just be like family that's visiting there and like you stay with them. I believe they have to like legitimately be living there. But if you want to stay at an Airbnb alone, you need to have a visa. If I went there as a student, I could stay at an Airbnb because I would be there on a student visa. Because I went to Korea without a visa and I stayed there under 90 days, I uh, had to stay at a government facility which is literally just a hotel. It's not like some sort of like hospital looking place at all. It's like they just bring you to a hotel that has been transformed to only be in use for this specific quarantine purpose. Also, another really great question. Someone had asked me, can you pay with cash for the government facilities? Now, I don't think that this would be something that cannot be done. But I would recommend really using a credit card just to make your life easier. I don't know if you can pay in cash, but all I know is that when I was at the facility checking in, they made me pay with a credit card. Like they did not have like a cash place to put cash anywhere. They just had like a credit card machine and they would put, they put my credit card in it and then like took it out. Someone also asked me, May this may be a silly question, which it's not. It's actually a very great question. Can you order food online or do they only provide you food? You can order food, but it has to be dry food. I don't think you can order actual like pre-made food for yourself. So for example, if you were to order like K barbecue from a restaurant, they cannot deliver that to you because the food is 
I don't want to say it's like wet because that's like not the right term but basically it's like pre-cooked food it's pre-made and you just can't eat that what you can eat are more like snacks so for example i have my boyfriend drop off choco pies to me um i don't know if you guys know what choco pies are but basically they're like american style malamars but they're like 10 times better so i had him drop those off to me so those are considered like dry snacks ramen you can have dropped off to you or you can order it somehow you can even have items delivered as well like i like to use this like riser for my computer because i have neck issues but basically my boyfriend dropped that off for me as well he even dropped a pillow off for me so you can drop off these items and even order them and people will deliver them to the hotel so now let's get into a little bit more of like techie questions because some of you guys had questions about sim cards and internet with the sim card basically just to keep it short i highly recommend that you guys just get a sim card you can get it at the airport um there is like a station to get a sim card so that is there and i, I recommend asking someone where to do that if you are lost there is another option to do or create some sort of like plan with your current provider in whatever country you're living in so in america i could have used verizon to do some sort of like international texting plan but it ends up being like extremely astronomically expensive that it's not even worth it the sim card is just the best and most inexpensive way to go then someone else asked a question about the internet and if the internet at the hotel is fast personally I thought it was like mediocre <laughs> so that was like I didn't have like a huge problem with it but I would say that occasionally it did give me some issues I tended to use my hotspot with my computer it usually served me pretty well just on my phone but when it came to my computer I would say that I just connected to a hotspot the last couple questions I'm just gonna rapid fire them I think there's like two or three but basically the first one is do I have to pay for the COVID test no you do not have to pay for the COVID tests i don't know if that's like somehow included within the hotel stay but you, you pay 98 dollars, 97 dollars a day at least for my hotel that's what i paid that was about 1500 dollars. that's kind of all you pay i don't know if the COVID tests are included in that total price you do get tested i believe on your first full day there and then you get tested two or three days before you leave and that's it when you are leaving korea to go back to your country um when i was leaving to go back to the us i had to go to a korean hospital to get tested and then i had to get an official stamp at that hospital that basically stated like i was negative and this was checked by the korean hospital they gave me an official stamp I believe that was like my only way to get through the Korean airport with proper that type of documentation. When I was going to Korea from the US, all I needed to do was just print out the email that I got from whatever testing site I chose. But in Korea, going back to America, Korea required me to go to a Korean hospital, get tested, and then get that official document and stamp. I believe that is probably a requirement for everyone to do that just because I, I think that it was more of like a Korea thing that less than an America thing. Then the last and final question, can you smoke in the quarantine facility? You cannot. Um, unless you are at an Airbnb and you have a balcony and you want to smoke there, uh, I guess you can do that but you cannot smoke in the rooms and they do threaten to send you back to your country if you do smoke or break any rules like leaving when you're not supposed to that is it for this video thank you so much for watching i am more than willing to make a multiple part series on this and i know i'm probably still missing some information so comment below what you want to know about quarantining in korea what you want to know about traveling there during covid and what it's like i will answer it in another video if we have enough questions and I hope that you enjoyed this video. See ya.